Hey everybody, it's Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. This is the second of two Q&A episodes for November 2016, covering your comments and questions that came in in October 2016 on LED lighting, smart lighting, lighting stuff in general. Sometimes we have a little bit of crossover from home automation, but we kind of split those up to two different episodes. Obviously, I take your questions and comments via email at questions at smarterhomelife.com. That's the best way to kind of get my attention because the YouTube's comment system for creators is kind of crazy to um, view the comments, but put them in both places if you like. I generally get back to you pretty quickly and then the best, most interesting ones that would be useful to the most people go on these shows. So send them in and they may be featured on a future show. Shows like this one and others on Smarter Home Life and the website in general are brought to you things like are brought to you by things like advertising, but also by wonderful, loyal, dedicated viewers um, who contribute through Patreon, which is a regular way to contribute monthly to the show's budget, which helps us buy products when manufacturers don't uh, necessarily send us every new product to test out. People like Michael D, Patrick B, Patrick M, Richard B, John S, and many others get their uh, get their privilege of having their names um, uh, read on some of these shows, but in addition, they get that feel-good thing that they're helping to build Smarter Home Life and to help us with um, budgeting and so forth and to help make sure that the show will continue in its current format and grow in 2017. We do need your help more than ever. If you want to learn how you can help us out, head over to our wonderful Support Us page, smarterhomelife.com slash support. There's free ways um, to help out the show. There are ways to just do your holiday shopping with us through Amazon and other uh, reseller uh, retailers and a whole lot more. Check it out and I will kind of get off my soapbox, but um, think about us during your holiday season when you're making the list and checking it twice. So let's get on to the comments. Um, for October, since there was some Philips Hue news and a number of products that naturally generated some additional questions and so forth than anything else. So I'm gonna cover these topics. So basically, we had a couple questions on Philips Hue. I'm gonna kind of group those together. And then we've got one that uh, kind of talks about how to use different types of uh, lighting or LED bulbs um, with different types of uh, lamp sockets. So let's take care of the, um, the big thing in the room at this point, which is the Philips Hue stuff. I'm gonna start with a comment from OLEJ24. Thank you for writing in. And uh, obviously I can't pronounce that, but hopefully that's not actually your name. Anyhow, um, that person was asking about the differences between the Philips Hue um, LED, you know, the smart LED changing, color changing, I can't talk tonight, um, color changing light bulbs. And We've seen a lot of this information come out. People are like, how do you tell the difference between the different generations? Because now there's three different generations depending on which hue product you're looking at. A lot of people are just looking at the regular light bulbs and the flood bulbs. Um, so here's the deal, I'll just boil it down to you. Um, because there is this product, let me say this, because I believe this is second generation and they're not gonna release a third, I don't believe. This is the hue white and you can see an up close um, picture of it as well. This is just the one that goes up and down, dims up and down, it's soft white, never changes color temperature from, doesn't change from cool to warm, doesn't change color either. It has silver um, printing in terms of the actual, the name of it, uh, the Hue White, and then the, the Philips logo itself. But this doesn't do much. I don't believe they're going to reissue this as another new generation product. Um, the generations that they have updated are the Philips Hue color and white bulbs, which change color temperature, dim up and down, and then obviously have the entire rainbow um, spectrum of colors. They updated that for this year. It has gold printing on the bulb, and you can also see it on the package. They've also updated the Philips Hue white ambiance bulbs, which don't change color, but they can change color temperature from warm, from warm to cool white and they dim up and down. Those new ones, third generation, also have gold printing. A product that is not out yet, and right now, um, I just checked this, it's currently out of stock on Amazon, at least. This is the BR30 Flood Bulb. It's a Philips Hue um, product. Again, color changing, changes to multiple shades of um, warm to cool white, and dims up and down. That old version, the second generation, which has silver, because um, 
some of the it's just confusing with the um with with the old printing and how to identify it so that old version which was last year's model is now out of stock that usually means the third generation should be right around the corner which they were delayed um, in getting that out so assuming they continue with their um the style of identifying these different generations that br30 flood bulb should also have gold printing but we don't have any images yet and i don't have it in my hands here either so we don't know but assume that assume once it hits um amazon's pretty good about identifying the bulbs by generation as well and showing you the latest version if there is an old one that you're looking at so I, that's kind of why i like uh, amazon's system but if you do um, google it and, and maybe set up a google search alert for it um, you'll be able to see when that comes out um let's see other hue products at this point they haven't been announced that they're going to update those um it seems that the other hue products were just fine with the color um, spectrum there weren't the issues as much as with the a9t and the br30 with greens and blues which is kind of what they fixed and a little bit of the dimming that they kind of improved um, for 2016 so that's kind of old news i just wanted to get through that um, last year it was generally black printing for the second generation so that was last year's concept so I, I hope they just leave it I don't want them to keep releasing new versions of all these bulbs every year because I think people are kind of these are not you know um, phones I mean not everyone is under the uh, same idea or the it's a different kind of mindset with lighting and things that you think of as while these are very expensive products they are certainly not commodity products, but even with the traditional LED bulbs, we've we've been through that, that some of the manufacturers continue to release these on a yearly basis, and people are just feeling like, I don't replace my light bulbs that often. So, and there are generally no trade-in programs either. Um, I know some, some users have commented about that. So you can't just send it back to Philips and just get the new generation. There's nothing like that. So it's a whole new world we're getting through it and that's why i'm here to try to answer your questions and clear this up so when in doubt gold printing that's kind of the name of the game so let's look at the next question on the philips hue spectrum so olej24 that's your answer and thank you for writing in so let's jump over to okay um trevis thomas does the hue motion sensor which i've covered before um did a whole review it's gotten actually pretty good um pretty good amount of views and people generally liked it um does that product work with certain hue products like the hue go now i don't have the hue go it's a battery operated portable hue color changing light that you can place just about anywhere on your home it sits kind of at an angle and it's you know kind of nifty i think phillips just you know experimented with a lot of different types of lighting but the question was does it work well the answer is yes so all Philips Hue lighting works on the Zigbee protocol. This is the reason that you need the Philips Hue bridge um, to communicate with them because this bulb, again, Zigbee, it's officially called Zigbee Light Link. It's a dedicated um, wireless technology built for lighting control and for home automation. This cannot talk to your iPhone, your Android device, or any other mobile device that is running Bluetooth or Wi-Fi because they don't speak the same language. Completely different sets of radios in these devices. So all the Philips Hue products, including the Hue Tap, the Philips Hue Dimmer Switch, the Philips Hue Motion Sensor, which was just introduced in October, uh, or it was September, but they went on sale in October, all of it uses the same protocol. And so, yes, they are all compatible um, with each other. That's one good thing actually that Philips Hue has done, or Philips has done with uh, the Hue line, is that everything is cross compatible. And now I'm gonna answer the next question. So Travis, thank you so much for your um, question and uh, on that, so hopefully that helps you out. Um, from Brian Harkins, do the new and old Hue products, it's kind of like Hue, you know, <laughs> getting these words out. Do the new and old Hue products work together? And the answer again is yes. That's a, another thing that Philips Hue has done very well uh, with that line of products. Whether you have the old original round Philips Hue hub or the new second one, and there is only um, two generations. I, I've verified this. Um, there's the old one, the round one, the second generation, which is the one that added HomeKit support, but you don't have to use HomeKit. Um, 
Both of them are compatible with all of the different Hue products. And all of the Hue products, you'll notice as you use um, Hue products that occasionally you'll run the Hue app or you'll run an, a third-party app and it'll say update available. They can update not only the, um, the Hue bridges, obviously, with additional technology, but each of these is remotely updatable as well with new firmware. So good on Philips for, uh, for supporting all their products in multiple ways. They've, they've done well with that. Um, you know, we can nickel and dime them uh, here and there for other other little nitpick things. But overall, I think for most people are going to be happy with Philips Hue. Let's go to the last question. And this is kind of compatibility, physical compatibility. So this is from Chris Opala. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Thank you for uh, writing in. Actually, this was a comment. I've noticed in my research of LED bulbs that the shape and front cover or enclosure design is dependent on the base type. And yes and no, and it can it can differ depending on many factors. But anyhow, sometimes that is the case. These are obviously the M19 Edison types, and I think uh, Chris is referring to A19 because M19 is kind of not a thing, but it's probably A19 that he's uh, that he or she is uh, referring to. Edison types, and I love the soft light output. So. Um, I can only use the GU10 base lamps, I'm, I'm assuming in their fixtures, and, and I notice that all of them deliver a very sharp and intense harsh light, very sharp and defined shadows. What is the best way to mitigate this and soften the overall output? These are directed at a specific display cabinet in a room. Long question. and. Sort of a long answer, but the question the question really is how do I adapt things and can you adapt bulbs to different fixture types? I asked myself this question a few years ago when I started fiddling around with different lights because I liked to buy I, I love going over to the lighting section over in IKEA. Number one, because it's you know you can buy a lot of various um, types of lamps and fixtures for pretty cheap because so much is pretty inexpensive at IKEA. But they have a wide variety of colors and styles and so forth. And I really I, I kind of went bonkers a couple of years ago and bought a whole bunch of stuff. Some of which isn't featured on the show anymore because I just don't use it here in this place. I used it more in the previous uh, location where I had some episodes kind of that were um, from about two years ago. But anyhow, um, the question is. So how do you adapt something like an A19? Sure, this is a smart bulb, but it could be anything, uh, an incandescent or an, an, an LED. An A19 is just your standard light bulb shape. And in general, for an Edison, an E26, which is for North America, um, this is a standard screw base, standard size. How do you adapt this to something else? And the, the answer is, there, there is an adapter for seemingly everything. And when you're dealing with certain uh, light fixtures from Ikea, and I don't have one um, uh, that I can hold right now, but many of them use candelabra bases in terms of that's what the screw bait or the uh, that's what the socket is. And then you think, oh, well, I want to use my regular light bulb in there. I want it because, or I want to use an, an LED because I can kind of use something that's a little bit brighter than what they're recommending because there's no fire risk because it's not going to generate heat, XYZ. And I just started looking up, you know, on Amazon and other places. I'm like, can I convert this from that? Well, answer is yes. And I'll give you a couple of links in the show notes to those adapters specifically. But of course, um, Chris is asking for about GU10. Well, here is a GU10 lamp, and here's an up close image of it. The front of it, of course, as he is saying, is a directed light. This is a 25 degree spot. Um, an LED spot. It looks like it might not be a spotlight because on the front of it you've got this kind of diffuser, but there are still lenses that are actually directing and focusing the, the light of the LEDs down into a 25 degree cone. And there's multiple ways that they do this, but anyhow, they're all generally for track lighting fixtures, um, or uh, there may be other fixtures that use the GU10 um, base, which are two little pins. You you know push it up and you twist it, depending on where you're putting your uh, light into the fixture, and it locks into place. So the question is, how do you adapt this to something else? Well, I had from IKEA some lamps that required not a candelabra base. Like this is our Cree bulb that we uh, reviewed a couple uh, we um, about two weeks ago the new Cree candelabra bulb that uh, dims down and gets warmer like a kind of a candle. Um, so this is an E12 base. This is E14 
and this is what I needed to adapt from one to the other. I needed to adapt a GU10 because I wanted to use something as a floodlight and I needed to go to an E14. So GU10 to E14. Put it in. If I can get that right. It's a lot easier when you can just do it like literally do it like this. Well, uh, that's just gonna... Of course, I, I can't do this on camera correctly. There it is. And twist and lock. And now you've got an adapted bulb. But then you're gonna say, well, but that looks weird. It's gonna extend out. Well, that's the challenge is, of course, you are gonna add, you know, about an inch, maybe an inch and a half of height. So depending on the fixture you're putting it in, this could look strange. But the answer is adaptability is possible in multiple ways. So I can take this apart. And let's take that candelabra bulb. So you may have some, you may have fixtures that you want to go the opposite way, that you need to put a candelabra bulb into a standard E26 socket. Well, they make those too. The nice thing when you're going from smaller to larger is that this guy can now, and I'm just going to put this down into a socket. I'm going to, this is a socket that converts the other way from E26 to E12. This, of course, if you screw this down into it, will, of course, get, you know, basically will disappear and you don't have that height problem because you're going from smaller to larger. So multiple ways, and my advice to you and to everyone watching is have fun with this stuff. There are adapters nowadays. They all come in like four or five packs. You can't really just buy one. But these are wonderful. You have to be careful depending on where you are in the world and what types of lighting you're using. You have to be um, cautious and read the, the labels and the information correctly to make sure that it will handle the voltage correctly. Um, some of them are you know, universal 120 to 220, 240 worldwide voltages. Some are just 120. So just be mindful of the voltage. Look at the, uh, look at the information on the, uh, the packaging and the, uh, the information online and just have fun with it. Have fun with it because you can adapt things to work in fixtures that you wouldn't even think of. And, you know, again, just be cognizant of how that's going to extend um, the height or the length of a lamp and if that's going to look weird or ugly. I've always done it to where I'm very finicky about how things look, so I always want it to sit within the fixture. And so generally if you're adapting like a candelabra or otherwise down into a pretty pretty large fixture you know no problem um so kind of an aesthetics thing so um that's the long answer and hopefully that uh, that answers it and like i said have fun experiment with it and these are usually go for about six seven eight bucks for like a four or five pack of these adapters so travis um thank you so much for your question and i'm sorry brian i can't get this stuff right um that is that for the episode. Again, write in questions at smarterhomelife.com on uh, LED lighting and all the different things uh, that we talk about on the show for either of the Q&A episodes. I've got a linked video that should be appearing um, right now in terms of one of those little links at the top of the page, those info links. It's a explainer video, I, you know, like I talked about at the start of this episode about why Smarter Home Life needs your support that video explains it all succinctly. I would love for you to check that out and it tells you why that websites um, and YouTube channels like this one actually need your support on top of you just watching stuff and looking at the ads and so forth. It really does help and it makes sure that we can grow and be one of the top websites and uh, YouTube channels in the smarter home category in the years to come. So please do that. That's it. I'm Joe Deganzik reminding you, make your home and your life perhaps a little bit smarter every single day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.